Welcome to the Who You Listen To podcast. I'm Susie and I'm here to take you on a musical journey with the Bleeders. Hello. Hello. What's up? Um, um, just want to introduce yourselves and the instruments you play. Yeah. Uh, I'm Daniel and I play drums. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rebecca Black and I play um, guitar. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Daniel, I play drums. This I'm Jackson and I play the guitar. Just want to give us a wee song to start with? Yeah, sure. cool. This one's um, a song that we play in church. <laughs> Oh, yeah, was I? Was yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. I, was uh, um, I my mum and mum and dad are in a wedding band, and all my aunties and stuff play instruments. And uh, so I've kind of my earliest childhood memory has been dragged to like sound checks and like rehearsals and all that stuff. So I was kind of kind of there my whole childhood. But um, what about you? I think my first uh, memory is uh, remember the. Well, apart from like Will Smith, because that, that was the first album I ever got, um, and it was uh, Will Smith's greatest hits. Favorite song on that album? Oh, every single one. I used to always <laughs> sing him. Um, there was a song. Have you heard the song "Boom Shake the Room"? Uh, I used to jump in my bed and literally <laughs> do that. Literally <laughs> shake the room. Yeah, I and I, I got into so much trouble for that. It's um, funny because like only recently 
we were talking about this and me realised that we both had this bought this our first albums with, with, with the Bill Smith song. Um, that was our first we didn't even know each other as kids, but that's like Are you the crazy. same age? Yeah, you're, you're, you're about four, twenty three. Jackson's about twenty I'm years older. Um <laughs> Aye, I'm twenty four, he's twenty five. The, the the first song I remember my mum uh, had this song mind the uh, missing everything but the girl and I don't know why that that song sticks in my head like that's, that's a really like early, a karaoke type that's song that's like a really early yeah I think yeah. she used to sing in karaoke that's cool um, it's a good song though that yeah. is such a good song so what was that like being in a musical family then uh, it was good um, I I kind of I kind of didn't know what to do in musical when I was really? a kid yeah. Cause I was just kind of brought up in it, and uh, cause it's all like they're all kind of like Irish musicians. Like my sister won the All Ireland and stuff. With fiddle, my mum plays a fiddle. My aunties play like all sorts and stuff, and uh, they all like yeah. But um, so I was kind of they wanted me to play the penny whistle and stuff, and I did for a while, <laughs> and I just hated it. I was like, oh, I hate this so much. And then, uh, but in terms of like family parties, everyone would be singing and stuff, and I used to do that. But um, yeah, and then I. Decided to, I would play something, but I was going to play the drums to piss everybody off. Just because it was different. Well, I'm not playing the penny whistle. <laughs> the but yeah. Might there be a penny whistle in any future? Oh, every Absolutely. single every single song has a penny whistle. You have to listen really closely, <laughs> but you can hear it in the background. <laughs> so, what was um, some of the first songs that you learned on your chosen instruments? Um. <laughs> I feel like probably one of my first because uh, because I got like a like a guitar book, and it was a guy uh, Tam who was my who was my neighbour who gave me this uh, guitar book. So so I learnt the songs in that, and on it was um, I couldn't play it because it was weird bar chords. There was waiting in vain, Bob Marley. Um, there was brimful of Asher. Nice. Uh, so like dun, 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 yeah, yeah. There was that, uh, which is exactly what God loves. If I was like. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, <laughs> that's what I can put. Um, and what else? I know there was. I think don't look back in angles on it as well. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Sorry. But uh, every time I think of Oasis, that just happens. I'll just, I'll just leave that there. So I know the biggest fan of Oasis then. No, nah. nah, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mine's was at. I was like begging mum and dad for drum lessons, like constantly. I was like, I want to play drums. I want to play drums, and then. Uh, they took me to the my first lesson was a guy called Kenny Hislop, who's like he used to play with Simple Minds and stuff. He was like, the original drummer, and he's like it was like the last one of the last remaining like proper rocks, like not like yeah, just the way he acted uh. and the way he was so cool. He still is. He, he lives in Thailand. Now, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, does. But uh, uh, he's ama- he was amazing. He basically just went like that, right? Sit here, sticks here. Your hand goes there. Your hand goes there. Just follow me, and he just put on uh, the white stripes. Uh, Seven Nation Army, and just was just like, and then I never actually got any lessons. So I was just kind of jamming, like straight in the deep end, which is good. I think I that's remember. The best that, I remember sitting in and some of like Danny's drum yeah. lessons, and I was like, oh, I wonder what it's going to be like. And there was there was no teaching whatever. I, I don't yeah. even know. If, <laughs> there wasn't even really chatting either. No. We just, we just kind of both like sat in a room. Yeah, yeah. Copied each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was weird. He was amazing. He was like so good. Um. Yeah. So. The move from listening to music to playing music. So, what sort of bands were you in to begin with? Uh, we kind of had two kind of different tastes, didn't we? Before we met, I think yeah, we kind of we kind of met in the middle. Like yeah, really yeah, early yeah. on, I never had like a music taste apart from like pop tunes. Like, uh, like uh, I, yeah, I think Wigfield Saturday Night's still <laughs> my favourite song. Uh, um, do you know the dance? No, <laughs> I, I can't dance to save myself. Uh, she done it. She do it. But I made up my own dance move, and it's like, um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Yeah, I've not seen you do that since I was like fourteen. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I kind of liked like Bob Dylan. Oh yeah, and, yeah. Uh, this is when I was like, like getting into like playing guitar because I was into. Um, See, like when me, when me first like started hanging about, it was like we were forcing each other's music on each other uh-huh. which is good like we were both like see I was obsessed with the Beatles that's the only band I liked like I, I, there wasn't any other bands for me when I was like 12, 13 
Uh, sorry, I'm keep rubbing this. Can you? Is that getting picked up? <laughs> <laughs> it's like ASMR. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I so that I uh, introduced you to the Beatles. Jackson introduced me to like Led Zeppelin, Bob Dylan, Jeff Buckley. Um, I introduced you to the Pixies. Yeah. Because uh, my dad had this Pixies tape when we were kids, and uh, literally used to just play it constantly over and over again. Um, but I saw so that. Is, is that was that a good answer? <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> um, so, what was the most um, memorable gig or performance during that time when you, See, when you were about fourteen? We started. Say? We started the band when we were like thirteen, fourteen, and we just started pl- gigging instantly, didn't we? Yeah, Daniel found pictures the other day. I, I found pictures Daniel the other day. Showing his pictures today, in. I think. I do I actually have them somewhere. I can yeah, I'll get them yeah. but um so we I uh, yeah we just like we never played any covers we just it the first uh-huh. time we actually sat down we were just writing well, songs we were originally in like a band like uh, with another uh, like singer like so, I was I yeah. wasn't supposed to be a singer at first um, and I didn't want to be a singer uh, uh, in fact I didn't even want to be a, a musician anyway I wanted to be a football player <laughs> but I, nobody would pass me the ball because <laughs> I was like, god um, awful and then um, so then I think I, my mum grounded me one week and uh, so then I, did, I was like, I'm going to learn the guitar, I'm going to learn the blues because I'm depressed, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, f- I don't know, 15 years old or something. And then um, uh, I started like playing that and then mum was like, oh, why did you join the soul band? So that's how me and like Daniel oh, met. Oh, I forgot about the soul band, yeah. Um, and then there was, there was like another singer and it was only when, when they left that uh, like the other members were like, it was one of these things where like I'm tying my shoelaces and everybody else like takes a step back. They're like, "Oh, we need a singer, right?" And I'm like, and then and then I ended up with. Uh, Hi, be- I couldn't I couldn't sing at all for like the first five years in the band. Yeah, I literally was playing. No, no, <laughs> sorry. Hi, no. Um, <laughs> definitely bad. So, I I literally was playing. I went to one drum lesson, and then I was like, "I'm a drummer. I can play drums." And then I seen that the teacher was like, so that our school was starting a soul band, like one of the teachers. And she was like, um, we need a drummer. And I was like, ah, I'll do that, I'll audition, I'll, I'll audition for it. And I was the only person that turned up for the audition. <laughs> so she was just like, right, you're, sure. you're, you're the drummer. And I was like, ah, oh, yes. Uh, and then literally there was a guy, I won't name because we're pals with him now. Oh. And I don't want to, yeah. So basically we didn't like him. <laughs> and, uh, well, he knows that you're talking about him. I feel tra- like oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> um, so... We, he was like, oh, are you starting a band? And I was like, ah, and he was like, I'll be a singer. And I was like, okay. Um, and it, it was like, I'll be a singer. And he was like, and see my best pal, Jackson, he's joining the soul band and he's going to play guitar for us. And I was like, ah, all right, cool. And I'd already started it with my cousin Liam. He was playing guitar as well. And uh, so then I met Jackson and I instantly didn't like him because I thought this is his best pal. <laughs> I'm not going to like him because he's his best pal and I but thought the exact same thing he told, <laughs> he told Jackson that I was his best pal because I, d- I, didn't, I didn't know him that well it was just was he in this old one? he was the tenor horn player so so like he was like oh you need to join this band with, like, and I'll be the singer and, and I think we played an Oasis maybe that's why we've got like an Oasis version <laughs> he forced us I to think, play Oasis like, that's um, what it was we'd, we'd done that and um and I so I never really spoke to Daniel for like the first couple of weeks in the band because yeah. I, I thought I thought they were like best pals and so then we formed our band with him as the singer and then we played one gig uh, it was a competition and we lost in front of the mcdonald brothers <laughs> we were so angry no i didn't care we, both of us didn't care the singer was really upset yeah, right. and then i'd never spoken to jackson at this point and we were just standing uh, leaning against the reception and there was this brother and sister who were who had made up their own language this, the weirdest thing ever, right? They'd made their own language up, and you know when you add like egg to the end of the word, <laughs> it was like that, and we couldn't. Like under- egg we, so we, Jackson was standing at one end, and I was standing at the other, and we were just like that, and we both looked at each other like, "What is happening?" And there's a wee bell, and people were like walking past, and Jackson just kept ringing the bell, and, and the, the villain sister were already pure stressed. They were like shouting at each other, and I don't know what they were saying, but uh, and then I pressed the bell, and then Jackson pressed the bell, and then the two of us were like, "Ah, he's alright." <laughs> And then the net literally was it, the, was it not like the reception bell the button uh, pressed and then ping, turned and then we both <laughs> <laughs> um, and then like the next week that singer never turned up to a rehearsal so it was kind of awkward and, and up, we uh, were just kind of like hmm alright and then uh, I 
I, I think we, we, we just ended up being pals, and then, and then at one point I turned around and I was like, oh, he can be a bit annoying, can he? And then he was like, oh, I, see I hate him. him. <laughs> I was like, I hate him. And Jackson was like, I hate him as well. And we're like, right, let's get rid of him. So, yeah, but the actual first moment that we fully bonded was when we were pure hysterically laughing. Oh, yeah, my, <laughs> one of my uh, one of my relatives had, like... Uh, it's like not funny. Was was dying right, and um, it's just no, it's no funny. It's like one of these things where, like, see when you see when you say it, and, <laughs> and it's so awkward that you just like bust it laughing. So so we like bonded over like my like dying. Ja- Jackson just I went like, are you alright? Because he was writing in his book, and I went, are you okay? And he went, I my uncle just died. <laughs> and then the two of us just actually just started hysterically laughing, like into it. But it must have been like a grief type thing for like you it. because you like. But we were in the world's best pals ever since that. Mm-hmm. It's just weird. It's a nice story. It's a nice story. It's a really warped story, but... <laughs> just a wee bit dark. Yeah, it's just a wee day, but... So what was some of the first venues that you ever played then? Literally our first gig was at the O2 Academy. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was Wait, well, our second gig. Our first gig was the audition for that. Where was the audition? Castlemilk. <laughs> some gig in Castlemilk. It was yeah. a community centre in Castlemilk. And again... Only two bands showed up to the competition. <laughs> so so we, we were in by, by like, uh, yeah. like default. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we got to play, uh, it was like a kind of concert thing, we got to go to Academy, and we literally just walked on. Everybody from our school came, mm-hmm. and someone threw a bra on stage. It's literally went downhill. Oh, <laughs> we've never been really able to talk about that. Somebody threw a bra on stage? Yeah, I was 13. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like... It's not going to be a big bra. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So you're just talking about how it went downhill from there. Uh, how uh, was the gig at Halloween? Ah, uh, that was good. That uh, was actually good. Yeah. Oh, I broke both my guitars. Not this one. I've also broke this one at my last gig. Uh, and I've kind of like tightened the strings for it to like stay on, but I don't know. What this, but yeah. So broken guitars. Um, yeah, you was... broke the drum last time. Yeah. The stones back for the gig. <laughs> you oh, the fish sh- through. Yeah. <laughs> you had that gig. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I was looking at that. Um, I think there's a picture of you me. just lying on the floor. Yeah, I was like, excuse me. I should have got a video of it somewhere. Oh, I shouted across to the same guy, like, there, there may be a hole in this bass drum. <laughs> and he went, what? And I was like, there may be a hole in this bass drum. And he never said it. And he went, there's a hole in the bass drum. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to, like, I don't even know what we did. Did we tape it or did we turn it around? Because it was like half of it. Oh, Jesus. That was so funny. Oh. I know, if you would like to sponsor the Beatles, please. <laughs> or some musical instruments. <laughs> uh, play some really nice See, thing piano. Is, play play Coldplay over this. This is my good one that I keep good. Um, like, it uh, keeps good. <laughs> there's, there's, this is the one, this is my Gibson that I keep good. So I bought an SG, like, is like a kind of substitute. because I was like, one of these days it's going to like fall apart. And then that like started falling apart. So then I bought another, I bought another cheap SG. Both of these are like £70 I bought from them. One of them was the Mad Malco guitars guy, see the, the it's a bucket, it's fast a, guitars. It's a fast guitar. One of them is them and I, and I had both of them at that, that gig. So in my head I was like I have limitless guitars. I have like an like an endless supply of guitars. I was like, it doesn't matter what I do and then like song two, I was like <laughs> like, like smashing it and then and then it got to like like half I think that's kinda of how we had to like finish the gig because there was just nothing left. Like there was in the third song, uh like my, my pal like took me into like the the crowd like bit right with, with, with like a mic and then I came back out and I never had my guitar. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> right, Matt, there was I just looked in the audience and there was like people's feet like dangling upside down. And I was just like, <sighs> and, then, and then I pulled it out and it was it was just like in tattles. Hey, somebody's feet were like floating past the audience and I was like, yeah, oh, it's Jackson. That's <laughs> that's why there's no music playing because Jackson's feet are in there. I just done that three times to your camera. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, the, that's the bad thing about being a two piece, right? Like, see, see most bands, right? Like the, the singer or whatever can like, like, like go off and then like, like jump into the crowd or whatever, right? But I do that. Daniel's just sat playing drums. As soon as one of us, just, 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 just yeah. <laughs> as soon as one of us like does something mental, the music just stops. Right. So many eight beyond point. And you would think we don't do it because of that. But you stay. But we do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that gig with the Sloth Bag Club was absolutely hilarious. You tried to film the time whilst they're trying to fix the drums. I think I put a. Um, Have you like, actually got it? There's like, there's like presets, it might be downloaded, but oh. there's, there's like presets on like this uh, loop pedal. I don't even. I'm back. So the gig at the O2. Yeah, um, so yeah, our, first, our second gig was at the O2. Um, I'm going to sit back a bit.
I feel like I'm very late. Um, so, I, my first guy comes to the hotel. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we, but the, the addition was in Castlemilk. I don't know how we found out about it, but did we ask? Daniel just said to me two seconds ago that he, he thinks his voice sounds dead high. <laughs> yeah, um, so, uh, I was trying to make him not make me sound like a middle-aged woman. That's fine. Do you know who my favourite radio... Sorry, this isn't answering the question. Matt, <laughs> seeing, uh, like, uh, Radio 6, right? Have you heard, like, Iggy Pop in it? So, like, Iggy Pop's got... Quite, he has quite, got quite a high voice, right? Yeah, you, can, you can kind of sound like that aye, sometimes, aye. right? But then, on his Radio 6 show, have you ever listened to it? No. It's uh, 79 o'clock. Uh, why am I the person Iggy Pop? He goes in. Coming up next is a wonderful band, uh, Strokes. <laughs> no, no, no. It'll be, it'll be like... It'll play a song and it'll just be like... Blah, 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 like just noise me. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. That's so beautiful. Beautiful music anyway. from a beautiful. See, I can't even go that low. I'm like beautiful, man. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the gig at the O2. Um, we played in. We we went to audition in Castle Milk, uh, and uh, literally only one other band turned up out of a possible like four or five. So um, and before we went on, we built the dressing the the like backstage area was like a dressing room with all these costumes. So we thought it'd be funny. It, it was like they were calling us on. I was they dressed as Spider Man. because yeah. <laughs> we just started putting all the like costumes. It was like Spider Man like onesie and like so like I had to like climb at it and then we did we grab the yeah we put pink lady jackets on nice. and we put pink lady jackets on and played and I think we were much worse than the other band, but I think that just made people go ah they might be funny for the other. Tell um, me about it, stud. I'm telling you. You're not just here. Uh, so, yeah, we did that. And then we went to play at the O2. And uh, literally everybody turned up from our school. Um, and we went out and played. And it was like, we were just these wee tiny wee guys that had like, been rehearsing for like a few weeks. Uh-huh. And playing this huge place. And um, it was interesting. Someone threw a bra on stage. Um, yeah. It was my uncle. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> you're going to have like 18 hours of us talking shit, and about three minutes is going to be able to not like incriminate. Be usable. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use the whole thing, yeah. don't worry. Oh, yeah. God. So, Which what you so, what has been your most memorable gig or performance during that time? <sighs> we, were, we were like. Playing, we were like fourteen playing with these I loved bands. Playing in, I loved playing in Ireland. Oh yeah, that was a good time. We played at a Beatles festival in Ireland, um, called Beatles Fest, uh, and I literally just emailed the guy out of the blue and was like, "Oh, we play Beatles songs. We've never played any we've Beatles never songs." Played Beatles song. And we were like, "We play Beatles songs. Can we ha- let us play?" This is the exact same scenario as the Pixies. I was just about yeah. to say yeah. that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That is exactly that. We we when we like because we no because we was no like um ah oh, so do, do you know all the Beatles songs and we're like we know all the Beatles songs right mm. but they're like meaning did, like, meaning like we knew what they sounded like and we we, we were like we we listened to them we were fans of them and then we were on like the ferry there and he was like uh, like he sent us a message and he was like oh so you're playing tonight at the town clock or whatever it was and then he says so can you play about like ten songs. And maybe you can have like two, like, like your own ones or whatever, and then we, we just assumed we will maybe play like one Beatles song. I don't know why we assumed that, <laughs> but uh, we learned like thirteen Beatles songs on the ferry over to Ireland in the space of like an hour, not like two hours, um, and then played that night. And they thought we were eighteen, we were fourteen and fifteen, and uh, we were eleven above a bar, and it was like free bar for the band, so that was. Oh yeah, so, so it was the town of Maville. In the whole town, uh, like like it was, you were playing in different pubs. So like some bands would play one night, some bands would play another, and it would, it would swap of it. So you, you would play a lunchtime slot, you would play like a like, like an evening day. slot, right? And then you would play like nighttime, and you would go about like all these different pubs. But all of the pubs for the Beatles Fest was free drink for the for the acts, and uh, so I ended up in. <laughs> and you want to tell that story? I don't think you should. <laughs> Again, I'm I ended up bits. That. Uh, yeah. I shot myself. <laughs> <laughs> no myself on the on the on the uh, floor. Do you know what it was? What it was? Oh, right, I've, I've started it now. Right. I was <laughs> I was gonna be sick, right? So like uh, <laughs> So I was gonna be sick. And uh, so like imagine this is the toilet and then 
And I was like, oh my god, like, wait a sec. And then, like, because I drank Guinness the whole time, because I was in Ireland, right? I was like, oh, I'm going to shit myself. And then, like, turned around and I was like, oh my god, like, wait a sec. And then I was like, turned around and then, like, I started crying because I was, like, so upset. And then my nose was, like, snorting and stuff as well. And then, like, every orifice, right? And then, like, I was facing the wrong way around and I was sick in the toilet and I. Shit the floor. Well, th- from from my perspective, it was the funniest thing ever because <laughs> I was lying in bed and our bassist at the time, Bukra, uh was in the toilet with Jackson, and all I could hear him going, "Jackson, no, Jack, no, Jackson, no, no, oh my God, no, Jackson!" And I, and I was just like, "I don't know what's going on, but it's the there's a reason thing. he moved to Australia." <laughs> I think it was worse for him because he had to he had to see it. Like I felt oh. it, but he had to see it. <laughs> it was it was a good laugh. <laughs> Yeah, so, oh, so the gigs were good there. So, <laughs> we actually came back a lot tighter. Yeah, yeah. That's not euphemism. Like, I think it's because we played. I think it's just... <laughs> please take, please take that. <laughs> please oh, cut that out. Oh, Mrs. McGuigan, Mrs. McGuigan. No! I heard your grandson's on there. It's going to be in so, what was the question again? <coughs> so did you go over to Ireland yourselves or did you take parents with you? <laughs> well, my uncle, my, uh, my cousin Liam, who was in the band, uh, his dad came, my uncle Paul, uh, and just spent the full time in the pub. So we literally were just kind of cutting about. We played on BBC Radio and stuff as well, didn't we, live? Yeah, Radio was, Foil. BBC Radio yeah. Foil. And, and that's got, funny, I, my uni pals, uh, they, that's their radio station, that's like Clyde that's One. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. Um, so now we're going to speak about your holy fuck moment. So that's the moment where you're on stage and the crowd are singing back to you and you realise that you want to be a musician for the rest of your life. Mine's was when Jackson shot himself in the bar. <laughs> 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 no, uh, um, do you have one? Because I, 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 I... Well, you said you had a weird one. I have oh, a, a um, really weird one, so... I want to hear that. I, I used to go, I, I go to Ireland like every year since I can remember. My, my grand's got a house over there and stuff, so... Um, I go all the time and uh, there's this like wee community centre thing and it's called the cult, like there's a cultist thing and it's like, my mum was playing at it and all my aunties and it's just like Irish music stuff but they have people singing Irish st- songs, strict Irish songs, like you, you have to, you, most people sing in Gaelic like, and uh, so I was, I was a wee guy, I was like five and everyone kept going up and uh, next minute I would disappear from my mum and that and I was just like, where's Daniel? And then they looked and I was like on the stage and like the guy who had the mic and he was like, right, okay, we've got a very special song from this little boy, uh, Daniel, he's going to sing a, a wonderful song. And uh, I sang um, Johnny Be Good uh, from, you know, the bit in Back to the Future when I sang Johnny Be Good. I was obsessed with Back to the Future and I sang that. And I done, I um, like mouthed and sang the guitar intro, like the 20 minute guitar <laughs> solo, because I was sure obsessed well, with it. <laughs> but the thing is, I like, Obviously, the old people were shivering me because it was full. Of, it was just old people, and uh, they all started jiving and get and, and dancing That's and all. Sweet. And I remember just being like, "This is nice. <laughs> I like this." Didn't want to be like an Irish musician then, but I was just like, "I like that." And everybody clapped to me and everything. I was like, "Hmm, I can do this." That was my and I went, "Holy fuck!" No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what mine is. I don't know, I, I think I really like um, cut, like coming up with songs in the studio. I think like probably like making songs with Daniel, it was probably like a moment like that when we, because uh, cause we've always kind of like, like been like the songwriters in the band and I think it's because we, I think it's because we've played like through all these Beatles songs and all these, uh, like I really like the, the kind of like songwriting aspect of it and there's like a point in the studio that happens, but it happens all the time. Otherwise, <laughs> be, See, be off. I was thinking about okay. this the other day as well. We've never actually sat down and to write a song ever. We, like we just we just end up like going to practice and then like like make it make a song and it's yeah. like um like oh we'll, we'll play something and then we'll go oh we'll try to learn another song and like don't know how to play guitar like uh, and play a completely different and play something completely That's different cool. and then we we do this all the time and sometimes it hits and you're like oh my god. That's another reason I don't really like practicing that much, because <laughs> because when you when you like because because I like that feeling of like like when you like you, when you write a song and, it, and and like something's being like made whereas if you go over it like like three times <laughs> um, like I think that's normal for people right? yeah. but like but, but if if I practice it too much then it can feel dead like drawn out when I'm playing live Do you know what I mean so I kind of like like going 
oh, it's a bit like that. Like, oh, uh. Eh. So we wouldn't do well on a long tour then? Oh, Play the same songs. Uh, yeah, no, no. We, we see the thing is, yeah. I think we would do it like um, it probably would be like like pixies or something. I don't know if you like see when they do like like where is my mind live or whatever. And he goes like, where is my mind? Where, where is my mind? Changes it. Right, and he goes, what's your feeling in the head? And he goes, how does it go? And it just yeah. they completely go off the. But when you see like, bands like that, that kind of annoys me. Oh, it, oh, it completely annoys me. Like Bob Dylan does it as well. And he goes, oh, you went to see Bob Dylan, <laughs> and he played every song like this. <laughs> We, we are massive Bob Dylan fans, but we still Huge liked Bob it, Dylan but we were just like... Uh-huh. Favourite Bob Dylan song? Oh, too, too hard. Um, yeah. Positively Four Street's a good song. Uh, uh, so the Man In Me. That's so good. It's got so many good songs. Yeah. So this is the point where I ask you guys to get out your phones and show me what you've last listened to on Spotify. I don't have a phone. <laughs> Dan, Daniel's got a big phone that opens up like this. Uh, Wait, no, you've got it though, haven't you? I do. It's in my bag. Do but, you uh, have Spotify on it? I do have Spotify on it. I'll get it. I've lost every single phone that I've ever had, so I just decided to stop. A lot of people think. Oh, is it, what, what is it, Mr. You? Your last plate. Oh, this might be really boring because we're trying to learn the, the Pixies songs. Yeah, as, as, as I believe. <laughs> um, Pixies. That is, is genuinely no, normal like that. I'll, I'll look at my last. Uh, with me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty boring. Never ever, All Saints. Oh, nice. That's, that's a great. I'm picking out like good ones. Um, Thomas the Dank Engine. Have you heard that? Like, uh, see oh the, my God. See <laughs> the, <laughs> it's um, uh, it's, it's Biggie. And, yes. And it, the, oh, it's so good. That's an amazing time. Um, these, these are just uh, <laughs> a home by the Dexy Chicks. That's a good thing. I love this. Take that anyway, like, that's what I was listening to last. Is that fun? Vashti Bunty. She, she's, um, she's the person who sings, Travelling off, travelling off, And that one. So, yeah. Oh, uh, what's what's yours? Home. Sorry. Uh, I don't know. I was listening to the blinders in the car though on the way over. Nice. Nice. Another one of mine is Ain't Got No Home by Clarence Frogman Henry. That's the one where he sings like a frog. He sings like a frog, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, See all these songs that you mentioned, they're all getting put into a playlist. Oh really? Oh Oh, yes, I need a topper then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. My playlist is called What in the Shitting Crikey. Do you know a really, really sweet tune? Uh, this person called Celeste. I heard it on Joe Holland the other day. And she's got a song called Strange. Strange. That's a good thing. Ty Seagull. Ty Seagull, sorry. Not Seagull. The Tall Man, Skinny Lady. A Tall Man, Skinny Lady is one of the best songs in the last, like, tall man, 10 years. Lady. Just Ty Seagull in general is one of our, like, favourites. He's amazing. Uh, I think. Um... Sorry, my phone's so small that I can't see the screen. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Descendants and like Germs and Black Flag and mm-hmm. stuff. Too, I was like. listening to a lot of their pals as well. Yeah, like, oh, uh, man. Like Fiends. And uh, I always listen to Fiends when I'm driving, like at the car park when I'm finishing work in Prima, because it just makes me feel dead hard. Um, I listen to them, New Cross, Stones and Immaculate, all these guys. That's my next question okay. was... Yeah. What local bands are you loving right now? Well, there's like a massive uh, like scene just now, right now of like bands that we are pals with and mm-hmm. like and it's even more we're like teenagers. Who was that band we went to see the other day? And um, we've we played with them before. It was the bald guy who wore a hood. Oh shit, yeah. They're they were, amazing. They were mad. Can't remember what they're called. Um, yeah, that's terrible. I'll message you and just like overdub it. And, <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, when we were like teenagers, there was a kind of weird tension between bands. Like, when we were like first started out, like, because all the, all the bands were really old and we had, because we were young and annoying, mm-hmm. we, um, there was just a weird vibe between bands, weren't there? Like, there was, everybody was kind of like jealous of each other. It was, or, yeah, like, it was much more like kind of like cutthroat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but see, like, now the bands in Glasgow that we play with and the kind of scene that we're part of. Everybody gets on so well, don't we? We all we all go to see each other, we all support each other, mm-hmm. we all listen to each other's music. It's so cl- it's amazing. I'm thinking about we were actually talking about doing like a compilation album with, with all the bands uh, in Glasgow at the minute. Putting a wee tune in. That'd be cool. 
That might be good. Yeah, I was thinking about doing something like that for charity, for help musicians or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be sick. Good. Oh, that'd be really good, actually. Yeah, that's my plan. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> we'll get you back in to do that. Yeah, Amazing. Um, so, who are you most looking forward to seeing in 2020? Can be anybody. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Does, uh, I know, I know Pedro Jam's playing in Hyde Park. Yep. Um, I really want to see Nick Cave. At some point. Does Santa count? Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, does it, yeah, so there's loads of people like that. Like uh, bands that I've still yet to see, like uh, Queens of the Stone Age. And We've stuff got like a that. list of like, bands that we want to see before we Toppers. Die. I seen Radiohead no long ago, so that was that was like amazing. Um, You've seen a lot more bands than I've seen. Um. <laughs> don't know, and obviously, like, just all, all all the Glasgow bands look good. So. Yeah. So it's that's better value for money than. Oh, right, for sure. Than Let's name drop them because. Just two tone television. Yeah, two tone television. Two tone television. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Like, They're like a real band. Every time we yeah. play with them, <laughs> like uh, because we come like and it's like. It's, it's like in tatters and uh. We are so. And they, and they have like stuff and they can play. Yeah. And <laughs> sing and. Our guitars look like that. Um. Who else? Fiends, obviously, amazing. Uh, New Cross. Ghost Baby. Ghost Baby. Uh, Stone Immaculate. Um, Shred. What? Have you listened to Shred? Uh, I've no, I've no Josh. listened to them yet. So I good. just missed them at that gig on Saturday because I was, I was. What was I doing? I don't know. I was. I think it was in somebody to sing Christmas songs. <laughs> um, but but yeah, wasn't to see them. Yeah. Uh, Buzzing to play with the uh, uh, Rolly Moe as well. Oh, Rolly Moe, yeah. I seen yeah, Crystal yeah. with the last uh, King Thuts gig, and then we're playing with them on the 24th of January. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like, these are like real bands, and whenever we, we do like a gig like this, I'm like, <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> He's not a real band, though. That's hysterical. Maybe. Aye, a lot of good boys. A lot of good <laughs> boys <laughs> out there. <laughs> um, Just so this is the point where you get to see what promo and other things you've got coming up. We're playing with Bad Hombres, Friday the 13th. That was really... Truth on television, <laughs> club as well. Yep. We're also playing uh, a Pixies cover gig. On the 20th? On the 20th, where we are playing... Um, I've never seen you that animated before, sorry, I'm <laughs> just... No, no, and, and my back. face is literally like this as well. <laughs> um, we're playing this song and it's all, it's all like uh, songs with the pixies that we love. We don't know how to play them yet. Uh, we've got we'll, learn, we'll learn them in the boat over. We've got a couple of days. We've learned one, um, but that'll be good. Then we're playing with Crystal and the Rolly Mo in swim school on twenty fourth of January for the thing. Me. Oh yeah, and that's I, I was saying of um, I I said that I wouldn't want to play King Tuts again but these are like kind of like Glasgow bands and it'd be cool whereas when we used to play before we were always asked to, to support, uh, like, to support like a band so it was like um, Drenge or like Taffy or like bands that were coming up to Glasgow and then we'd sell the tickets and because they were like a touring band they, you wouldn't make them look good but you weren't allowed to use any of their gear and I don't know if you've seen the size of like King Tuts it's tiny and when we used to be like a five piece uh, four piece five. We had a keyboard player as well. Um, big up Matthew Bello. Yeah. Um, and when we when we done that, like we had to have like a drum kit on top of a drum kit, and I'm stood like this. Yeah, we and had I, to go at the, at the front of the stage, we squashed. And this happens so many times. And we just hated. There's it. There's only two years now though, so. And, but we're like behind the monitors, so we couldn't hear anything we were playing. No, in front of the monitors. So we couldn't hear anything about playing. So was that the band's decision that you weren't allowed to use their stuff or? I think it's just the rule. Management and stuff. Because it happened like four times. There like. was bureaucracy. <laughs> 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 um, but I don't know. All the bands were, were playing well, pretty cool. Um, and there's, there's only two years as well. That's the, I think that's the best thing about being a two piece. Yeah, we've not played since the, just two of us. So. Is I can like, like stretch my legs like and... Kick me in the face. And that's... And, and I love them with. So you just spoke about um, the band that you were in previously. Mm -hmm. What was that band called? The, the Modest. Modest. <laughs> and what kind of music was that? Uh, 
Yeah. We don't, I think we've done everything. Because that everything. was the one that we were... We've only been the Bleeders for about a year and a half now, maybe two yeah. years coming up for. Two years. Um, and so we we tied loads of different things. So we were, so kinda, like, we were in that teeth. band from when we were like 13, 14. So, yeah, a long time. But, good song. Right? One of our first songs was uh, um, Kimo Sabe. And uh, it was a uh, Kimo Sabe flung a pie in my eye. Because I walked in the room and said, you must die. Um, so really, really highbrow stuff. Like, <laughs> like um, Radiohead material. <laughs> what was the other song? How do you do the video that you do so well? We had loads of seven minute long songs which as well. Were, which was an interesting and, uh, song, like title. And then we just stole Insane in the Membrane <laughs> for the chorus. Oh, you'd be literally sang Insane in the Membrane. Uh, See, well, I think we're... So it was a mashup. No, I mean, just blatantly no, just, we just stole it. <laughs> we just literally nicked it. Yeah. Like, people, cause people were just like, ah, it's fine. There was a lot, yeah, there was a lot of, like, eight minute long songs. and. But the thing is, like, we we took it so seriously in terms of, like, the, the music and the band and all that. And, and we would get so disappointed because we, we get brought down to London and stuff. And uh, we had a manager and we had, like, we, we recorded at Universal Studios and stuff. So we were, like... But, like, down in London but it, was, it was never right it was never right the, the, when we got we kind of started because me and Jackson have always wanted to play the music that we're playing just now but I think we were kind of I don't know every, every yeah like every sort of like manager we had we'd, we'd play something like Dead Heavy and it'd be like ah what eat your face right and then um, <laughs> uh, and then and then they'd be like oh cool but maybe if you say like like, I want to eat your oh, yeah. dinner, like, yeah. and then we go, and then we do, and then we, and then we, and then we, then we do songs, and they'd be like, I want to eat your dinner, right, and then, and then, like, nothing would happen, and then we would, we would, like, go to the we were slowly getting more, we, the, the moment, but I was just like, nope, it was when we were down in London, and uh, we met up with this woman, really nice woman, but she was just like, oh, she's awesome, yeah, she, but the guy was like, um, my manager was like, yeah, so, um, just want to meet this woman, it just, it would just be good to meet her and stuff. And uh, she's a songwriter, it would be really good to meet her. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, cool, that's fine. And uh, we went and... Um, yeah, it was like, she wrote seven she, number one. Yeah, she wrote seven like, number oh, that one. that would be cool done. to, like, learn some she, stuff. Like, she, we might learn. Yeah, she wrote all the songs for, like, Rizzo Kicks and stuff. And I remember just being like, right, cool. And she was like, right, so um, I'm looking forward to, to writing your music now. And we were just like, what? She was like, yeah, yeah, I'm lo- really looking forward to working with you and, and, and writing songs for you. And we were just like, right, um, what songs have you written? She was like, get down with the trumpets. And we're like... <laughs> Uh, so then we were just and we were kind of getting more was making as well like the same stuff and all that like like no <laughs> not <laughs> we don't do that imagine anymore. she else is yeah no I know, but, but do you know what I mean he was just kind of making us try and it, like then I got the feeling he was wanting us to be like one direction I think that I think that the kind of like takeaway I've got for it now is that see since see like in the so that was like years and years it must have been like eight nine years or something and then in the two years we've been doing this that. So like obviously it was bigger because it was more like marketable, right? But the response we've got to like st- well we we'll we're playing literally exactly what we want, um, even if it's like a bit brutal or weird or or whatever. Um, I don't know. People respond to it better because they can tell we're enjoying it and we're, and we're like having fun. I think we just don't care it. as much. Well, we care about the music. That's the only thing we care about. But in terms of like the whole expand experience, the bands take things very seriously. Mm-hmm. I feel, I, feel sorry, like I feel sorry for some people like because yeah. you can tell it's like it's, they're really like worked up about it which we used to be like like we would yeah. get so stressed out and stuff but we just stopped caring as soon as we stopped caring we actually started enjoying it a lot more yeah. and uh, hence the makeup I don't know if you can tell <laughs> that <we stopped> <laughs> uh, but um, I so like I don't know we just we just kind of stopped caring but um, I, you know you see bands like taking pictures like looking off into this distance and all that like we are now we, I good. can to the line. Um we 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 can add phys- we were talking about this the other day, we we would feel physically sick having to do that. Yeah, but we we used to get like like so whenever there would be like a photographer or something like and, it, and they would be like, Oh stand against the wall and and like I don't know how to like do that kind of thing. Like yeah. all that stuff makes us feel awkward so uh, there's so many pictures of us all dressed in like turtlenecks. <laughs> Like, <laughs> seriously, yeah. I'm not even joking, black we turtlenecks. Had, we, had, we had to wear all uh, Converse as well. Because we were sponsored by Converse. So we had to wear Converse. <laughs> and it just made us feel sick. And we just felt like... Oh, Manufactured. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, we just hate it. And we went to down to record with the uh, producer. Um, was cool who was actually so cool. And this is the moment when I found out that 
possibly we were getting. Oh yeah, so we drooped. had a, we had a song called Amanet. Like, like, have you seen the book? Like, a, a boy called it, yeah. right? Which is pretty, like, uh, brutal. So, like, that was kind of, like, the, the mood of the song, right? Uh, but it was, I, f- I thought it was, like, a catchy kind of yeah. uh, song. Yeah, can't remember. The, the, the yeah, lyrics were, I'm a nut, uh, 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 Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> and uh, so it was good. And then uh, so we, we were supposed to play that. And then, he, uh, what's his name? The so, yeah, I was, I had, you didn't have any headphones on. And mm-hmm. I had my drum headphones on. And the, our manager at the time was in the, the recording booth. And uh, I get the feeling he re- the producer really didn't like your manager. Um, <laughs> sorry, cut that out. Don't like it, it's rude. Um, but uh, so we, yeah, we were just like sitting there and I, he knew I was like, because he pressed the talk back button so, he could, so that I could hear. And he was going, yeah, I mean, if you can try and steer them away from playing like, um, like, you know, like the heavier stuff, trying to make it a bit lighter and a bit more um, commercial and a bit more like, so I want to be able to sell it and stuff, and you know. And, and that was so sound to him to yeah. that though. Yeah, like, so yeah, that we yeah could he, hear he that was because, because he wasn't either. willing to share it with yeah. us, do you know what I mean? He, he, he never told so. us, that, he, he never once did he sit down and go, this is what I want to do with you. He was always like, oh, you know exactly what you're doing, but trying to like drip us into becoming this, and we were just like, nah, mm-hmm. see you later. I thought it was amazing. We we had a vocal coach and she was an X Factor vocal coach. She yeah. was, she's awesome. We still do her like yeah. vocal warm ups. Um, and but like another thing so like so we thought that's what that was I thought like I scream a lot and it would help uh, help me like we thought we were getting vocal coaching do these things and then uh, and then one day like she turned around and she was like so now that we've got that sorted we'll work on like uh, stage presence and, 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 and like your voice like so people can like understand you on the on the radio this, this will be funny because nobody will be able to yeah. understand what I'm saying here because I just mumble but uh, I have for Paul do you know what I mean she was like she was like that um, so Elocution is so when you're pronouncing what a number just like that. She tried to make us not talk last week, and is that what she tried to do? So we're, again, we're just like, ah, oh, I hate this so much. Um, but I can't. I, I don't regret it at all. But we probably would have money right now to, to pay for. Uh, no, nah, yeah. what's the, like that means nothing. Ah, oh, no, nah, I would take the money right now. See if I go back. <laughs> I would take, take the, the money and be a manufacturer band. Hundred percent. So I don't want to say your name, but if you're listening. Please be our manager again. Um, <laughs> be, we're willing to sing, get down with the trumpets. We're willing we're to a, we're wear old, converse. We're getting old. Tunnel next. It's, um, uh, we're running out of time. Yeah. Just, just so <laughs> literally we went the opposite. So as soon as that happened, we were just like, we're calling ourselves the bleeders. <laughs> we're going to <laughs> wear makeup. Yeah. The, the, the the that was another one of the things. Uh, one of our, uh, our best pals, uh, Matthew McGoldrick, Faith Vegan Leather. He... Um, like I told him, like so, so this is I was like, we're quitting the band, but we'll we'll change his name to the Bleeders, and he was like, oh cool, right, and he was like, oh no, you're like like doing well, and I was like, we're changing them to the Bleeders. Uh, we're gonna wear we capes. Ca- and we're gonna makeup. wear we're gonna wear like capes and makeup. Never playing King Tut's again. He was like, well, you need to play King Tut's again in, in order to get on it. I was like, nah, never playing King Tut's again. <laughs> he was like, no, no, you really need like if you play this place, then you can like meet that person. And I was like, no, I'm gonna go, and I'm just gonna play like I'm winded. I just remembered something as well. This is how bad we were. They gave us, um, the, the studio we were doing, gave us uh, free tickets and backstage passes <laughs> to see the, was it the Killers? It was the Brandon Flowers. It wasn't, the, it wasn't the, even it the was, Killers, I would have went and seen. It was the singer from the, from the Killers. And uh, we were like, oh, thanks a lot. Oh, that's amazing. And we just went and get pissed instead. Uh-huh. We never even went. We were just like, nah. We never, we never even sold the tickets. Uh, I know. But so stupid. So that is Brandon Flowers is still waiting in the dressing room. When did he come? <laughs> <laughs> I quite like that song as well. Let it all go to I don't know what that is. He did a song. <laughs> <laughs> Just one song. I have no idea. Like that, that was the thing. Like it was. It went solo for like five minutes and then. Yeah. He's got seven mics. I don't know if he's got seven mics. He's a Mormon, but. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Um, so that's us cool. finished. So nice do you guys want to introduce your next song and you can play us out? Thanks for sure. listening. What are we doing? Oh yeah, well, cause, is... cause we're playing the Pixies gig, we're going to play a Pixies song. Um, it's the first one we've learned. First Pixies song that we've learned so far. Okay. This song's called Pixies. <laughs> <laughs>